Your hair is getting manipulated on the sheets. Um, you're not careful when you're putting on your clothes. Don't use the highest setting of heat because that's just gonna cause damage. You don't always have to have different styles every day. Give myself a silk press without washing your hair. That is a big, big, big no-no. Why is the silk press not flowy? And it's because always putting it in a ponytail, always just talking and running your hands through it. Don't risk it all because it's not you working. You just want to maintain your silk press for as long as you can and that is how you do it by just not over manipulating it. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Viennese and today we are going to be talking about the top 10 silk press mistakes. So let's hop into the video. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my channel. Like I said, my name is Viennese and I'm so glad you are here with me today, tonight, whatever time you chose to watch this video. I am a straight hair natural, just in case you are new here, and I straighten my hair every two weeks. So silk presses are quite a big deal in my world. And I wanna share with you some mistakes that you could be making, some mistakes that I have made, but I feel like I have perfected my silk press and I wanna share it with you and I also wanna help you prevent these mistakes. So let's hop into the number one thing. So the number one thing you wanna make sure is that you are doing your silk press on clean hair. You want to begin with freshly washed and conditioned hair to ensure it's free of any product buildup or residue. If you do not do this, your silk press is gonna come out stiff. It's not gonna have body. Have I done this before? Yes. Plenty of times I've been like, why is the silk press not flowy? And it's because you never want to just wake up one day and say, I'm going to put a flat iron to my hair. I'm gonna give myself a silk press without washing your hair. That is a big, big, big no-no. First of all, it's gonna be stiff. There's gonna be no body because you have all of that product residue. Think about all the times you've put in edge control. Think about the pollution that's been in your hair. Think about the excess oil. You wanna make sure that all of that is cleansed out because that is gonna give you such a beautiful soap press. All right, the second mistake is not deep conditioning. You definitely want to deep condition your hair every time you do a silk press. You always want to use a deep conditioning treatment to moisturize and nourish the hair, and it makes it more manageable and less prone to breakage during the pressing process. You never just want to put heat on your hair without giving your hair some nutrients before you do that, okay? The third mistake is not using heat protectant. Anytime you apply heat to your hair, you want to use heat protectant. Don't ever think, oh, maybe I can just skip it. I can't find it. I'm not going to use it. No, it's better to wait, go to the store, get the heat protectant, and then do your hair. Don't risk it all because it's not worth it. Prior to using any heat styling tools, apply a heat protectant spray or a serum to protect the hair from heat damage. You do not want to get any heat damage, any breakage. No. The fourth mistake is not using high quality heat tools. Invest in high quality flat irons with adjustable temperature settings to effectively straighten the hair without causing excessive damage overall. You do not want to use cheap tools. And a lot of times you want to make sure that your heating tools are heating up properly. You want to make sure they're made right because if not, this can also lead to damage. You can't just use anything that you see, anything that's just cheap. Oh, I'll just use that. It doesn't matter. It really does. The fifth mistake is not using small sections when flat ironing. You always want to divide the hair into small sections to make sure each strand is being effectively straightened. That's very important. And this will also help you to achieve a sleek look. And I love a sleek look. We don't want the frizz. The sixth mistake is not using the right method. You want to use the comb or the brush method. Use a fine tooth comb to chase the flat iron down each section of your hair, which helps to smooth the hair. And it's going to ensure that it's straightened from root to tip. Sometimes I like to use a comb and sometimes I use a brush that has bristles that I can glide through. I've already done a video on this and you can check that out where I discuss all the tools that I use, but I like to use a brush sometimes because it really gets in there and separates the hair strands. The seventh mistake is the heat settings on your flat iron. You want to adjust the heat settings on the flat iron based on your hair's texture and your hair's thickness. Lower temperatures are best for finer hair, while temperatures that are higher are better for those that have thicker or coarser hair. And in my case, that is me. I have very thick hair, so I use a higher temperature. But if you have thin hair, don't use the highest setting of heat because that's just going to cause damage. 
So you definitely have to know your hair before choosing what temperature to set your flat iron to. Number eight is not washing all of your shampoo and conditioner out. This has happened to me before and I noticed that my silk presses were not coming out the same. And that is because I had left in excess conditioner or excess shampoo. You know how when you're washing your hair and you're conditioning your hair and you just try to like get it out really quick and like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to blow dry. You do not want to do that. You want to take your time and make sure after you have applied that shampoo and it's time to rinse it, that you get all of that shampoo out. Once it's time to deep condition and you've done that, rinse it all out. It's something about all of that product being out of your hair that makes your hair come out so fluffy, lightweight, and just has so much body. The ninth mistake is using water-based products after doing your silk press. So it's important for our hair to stay hydrated, but I suggest using an oil. Don't use any products where you look at the back that first ingredient says water. You don't want to do that because our hair is natural. We don't want to cause it to revert. We don't want to cause it to get frizzy. So if you avoid water-based products for your hair after a silk press, that is going to help maintain the sleekness of it. Tenth mistake is too much manipulation. Whether it's using your hands and just always having them in your hair after you've done it or whether it's not protecting your hair, your hair is getting manipulated on the sheets, um, you're not careful when you're putting on your clothes. Just when you have a silk press, you have to keep in mind that you have one and that you want to make sure it lasts for a long time. So you don't want to do too much to your hair. You don't always have to have different styles every day, always putting it in a ponytail, always just talking and running your hands through it. You just want to maintain your silk press for as long as you can, and that is how you do it, by just not over manipulating it. So I hope this video helped you out. I hope it helps you prevent any mistakes when doing your silk press because I want your hair to come out fabulous and remain fabulous. Thank you so much for being here and watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you'll be alerted when I upload more videos. Also, I'm gonna list below all of my favorite hair care products, tools, things like that in the description. So feel free to check that out because they have really worked for me and I believe they will work for you too. And as always, I love you, Jesus loves you, and I will see you guys on the next video.